Healthcare equity is under attack in much of the country with different bans going into effect and the LGBTQ plus community has been particularly impacted with lack of access to care, gaslighting and bias and other problems that are ongoing in the industry. But one digital startup is starting to find some promise with insurers starting to cover services. That's Folks Health and joining me now to discuss all of it and more is CEO Liana Guzman. Liana, really good to have you join us today and great news with the Blue Shield of California and Cigna, a huge insurance provider, getting you guys in network. Talk to me about that and what the journey was to get here. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I always uh, appreciate getting to chat with you. Um, the journey, you know, we started this company about two years ago. And the reason that we started Folks Health was because we lived in an incumbent we live in an incumbent model that at best is not built for us and more often than not is openly discriminatory and even violent and we knew that our community deserved to have not only affirming care but expert care and so you know we started 2 years ago we started as a cash pay bot model um we felt like it was the quickest way to get to market we also wanted to make sure that we never lost sight of who we were building for which is ultimately our members. Um, but one of our core values is accessibility. And in a in a country where 90% of Americans access healthcare through uh, insurance, some form of healthcare insurance or another, uh, you know, you really can't drive access unless you're in network. And so we're thrilled today to start the, the beginning of um, what will be a, a hopefully a, a long set of, of partners in the healthcare space um, for whom we can now provide uh, in in network coverage for our members. And these members are not a monolith, right? You're dealing with uh, complex issues and different uh, needs for this community. I remember, you know, not too long ago, it was really hard to find in-person care and you had to have, you know, a sticker uh, on your doctor's office to signal LGBTQ plus friendly services. I, I wonder how has that changed to the point where we are now facing even more pressure for the community, bans such as, uh, uh, gender affirming care bans in uh, many states have come into effect. Abortion bans have also been impacting the community. So talk to me about how all that pans out for you and the services you can provide, because it is digital health. It is. You know, I will start by saying that 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 world that you described about how it's difficult to find even in-person care, unfortunately, has not changed. Um, the average wait time in this country for gender affirming care in person is somewhere between six and nine months. And so um, and, and oftentimes, um, you know, when you look at for affirming care, what that means is that a clinician has said we are willing to care for this community, that doesn't mean that they have trained the entire staff of that office for how um, to interact with members of our community. And it certainly does not mean that that clinician has spent the time um, to really develop an expertise on how our needs may differ from you know, our cis and straight counterparts. And so um, that reality has not shifted, which is why now more than ever, it is so important that people have access to digital providers like ours, um, because whether you live in a care desert, um, so you just can't get access to care, or you live in a place where there is care, but the wait times are incredibly long, you know, we as a community have a right to get care in a timely fashion. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the laws that you mentioned, they, they're, they are plenty. I mean, we, that is one thing that has changed is um, we have, it was unimaginable to me, I would say, you know, five years ago that, that things could get um, quite as bad as they have. But you know, we are seeing um, that that our community has become a wedge issue, um, particularly for the Republican Party. And so you have governors like um, Abbott and DeSantis um, and, you know, uh, presidential hopefuls who are really using our community um, as a hitting post. Um, and they're doing it in ways that are completely inaccurate um, and frankly abusive. And so um, for us, one of the, the priorities, our first priority is to provide care to our community. But um, we feel it is, you know, crucial uh, that we use our platform and our position to also drive broad systemic change. And I'll give you an example of that. Um, Ron DeSantis um, passed an incredibly discriminatory law in Florida. Um, and I, I like to think of it as evil genius because he didn't come out and say adults can't access care. He just made it nearly impossible for them to by creating so many hoops. And so um, you have to be, meet with an MD in person to get an informed consent, which they haven't actually put together and published. Um, and then an MD has to sign off on medications. And he did it because he knew that most uh, Floridians who were accessing gender affirming healthcare were doing it through NPs. And so we, within weeks, 
um, spun up a number of clinics in the state of Florida that were staffed by MDs so that we could kick off that informed consent process um, and begin to, to offer care immediately so that we didn't leave people um, in a state of emergency, not accessing the, the care that they need really to survive. So that brings me to the to the final question, which is really, you have, uh, of course, all these bands in play in different uh, states, and being a digital health platform, you can sort of surpass those borders. What does this in-network then status do for, for that? And do you have conversations ongoing with other large insurance providers? Yeah, we do. We have a, a few other conversations um, with national providers that we hope we'll be able to announce in the next um, couple of months, if not much sooner. This is huge. I mean, you know, a lot of our members have come out of network and paid out of pocket to access the care that we provide because they simply did not have access to it within their existing um, ecosystem. And for them, it means that they can continue to access that care at significantly lower cost. Um, and then for many others who couldn't find um, the wherewithal to be able to pay out of pocket for our care, they can now access it in a in a significantly um, more accessible way. And so um, it is huge. I, you know, it just it is we as a community face a lot of barriers in accessing the health care that we need and deserve. And um, being able to access this care through insurance removes just one of those many barriers, but a very important one. And so we're really proud of the companies that have signed on to, to work with us. I think they have taken a really um, forward-leaning approach. They understand that when they talk to their membership, they are not able to provide the care that their membership needs and deserves. And so, um, you know, to be able to partner with them, to be able to do what's right for them, um, I think is, is just uh, incredibly important. And I think, frankly, I, I hope that it'll um, lead to broader changes. You know, I think I think when you when you get um, corporations on board and they say this is important and we are going to partner or invest in this, I think it helps to shape some of the the national narrative in ways that are really important um, and have knock on effects that go all the way up to the White House. Certainly, certainly a, a signal, at least, from the industry. Well, great to have you with us, Liana Guzman, CEO of Folks Health. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me.